If you've ever lifted weights to build muscle, you'd know that most of your gains come not during the hour you spend at the gym, but in the other 23 hours in the day while your muscles are recovering and building. It turns out that that's similar to how studying and learning can work too. Just like it's super important what you eat uh, and the right amount of what you eat uh, in between workouts, it's incredibly important what you do during the breaks in between your study sessions if you really want that knowledge to stick. I'm Andrew with Brainscape, an adaptive study app that literally wrote the book on space repetition. And if there's one thing that we've researched more than anything else, it's how to optimize the breaks in between the time that you review each concept for maximum learning speed and maximum memory retention. If you think about it, there are really three levels of study breaks. The first is the break between when you review one single concept and the next time you see that concept. This is traditionally how we think of spaced repetition. Like if you're using Brainscape flashcards, our app will automate those micro repetitions for you by taking your confidence rating in each flashcard and determining how frequently to repeat it. By optimizing your micro repetition intervals, the, the break time in between each repetition of each flashcard, and then giving you an estimate of how much study time that you have left, Brainscape can then help you plan your macro study breaks, which are the larger breaks in between your overall study sessions. You'll ideally want to plan ahead for these study sessions, uh, sprinkling in as many as you possibly can in a way, way that fits in with your life. And if you are using the Brainscape app, um, you'll be able to do that much more easily because you could even bust it out for just one or two minutes anytime that you're out and about or in the bathroom or at a bus stop waiting um, so that you can, you can get the coverage. The important thing, however you schedule it and whatever tools you're using, you've planned yourself enough total study time that is spread over as many sessions as possible so that there's, there's maximum break time for your brain to absorb it. Once you are finally committed to sit down for a few hours to really study, that's when you want to make sure that you're planning the right energy breaks within those long study sessions. And that's really the third major type of break and typically what we think of when we think of a study break. Just like it's impossible to do bench presses straight for uh, an hour with no breaks, the brain needs a similar pump and rest cadence for optimal performance when you're studying. Now, of course, knowing exactly how long you could study straight before you need a break is probably a function of what you're studying, what you've eaten, how tired you are, and a million other factors. Just listen to your brain to know when you're starting to zone out and the knowledge isn't sticking anymore. Um, but the, the important thing is when you take a break, you limit the breaks by setting a timer and being honest with yourself. If, for example, you've only just done a 20 minute study sprint, then you probably haven't earned more than a two minute break. But if you just studied for a full hour or more, yeah, you could maybe give yourself a 10 minute break. That timer helps you avoid getting too sucked into that break activity itself which brings me to my final point about what you should be doing during a study break. Research shows that the best types of study breaks are those that somehow recharge you biologically. For example, going for a quick walk around the block or in nature, if you're lucky enough to have some greenery near you, especially if you feel like you need a break from your physical study space. Or, you could do some simple desk workouts like air squats or lunges or push-ups or side bends or standing yoga poses. These won't only prevent you from getting stiff from sitting for too long, but will also get some blood flowing back to your brain that you'll need after that break. Similarly, a uh, little protein or vegetable snack will get some nutrients going to the right parts of your brain while keeping other cravings at bay until you've earned them for the big reward after your exam. You could also try a mindfulness break, right? L lying down, taking a, a, a micro nap or, or stillness, not quite getting into sleep because then uh, you might get a little too comfortable and too long of a break, 
but but something where where you uh, become very aware of yourself, your surroundings, maybe prayer if 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 that's your thing. Um, for another quick uh, type of energy break, there could be breathing exercises, right? Four seconds in, four seconds out, which might be exactly what you needed uh, when your mind was starting to get numb from calculus proofs or remembering history content or conjugating Spanish verbs. The, the good thing about all these exercises is, is that they don't involve the consumption of any additional media that will occupy your brain with new thoughts. This will keep your brain empty and free to consolidate all that knowledge that you just studied in the previous sprint, right when it's fresh in your phonological loop. That's the important thing. No social media, no um, you know, getting sucked into Instagram or Facebook or whatever. If you, if you must, you could send a text message if there's something that you're planning. Just, just don't get sucked in. Don't turn on the TV. Don't do anything else because these are rabbit holes that could devolve into a wasted hour clicking on cat memes and ain't nobody got time for that. I know that a lot of these tips might seem basic and obvious, but I promise you that the benefits of following them add up. There's seriously no single cognitive science principle that is more important to learning than nailing the right intervals of time between each exposure of what you're studying. Spaced repetition. You need to just nail the right type of micro break, macro break, and energy break so that the knowledge retention will take care of itself. If you like this advice, please be sure to subscribe to this channel. Check out the Brainscape Academy for more tips on habits and productivity and learning. And of course, be sure to keep studying your intelligent flashcards in the Brainscape app itself, which will help you learn anything twice as fast and remember it for longer than you could previously imagine. Armed with all the tools and advice that Brainscape can provide you, you will be able to rise to any challenge.